Dr. Lin Ying Chao. Dr. Chao is a professor and uh, extension specialist from the Ohio State University. Her talk is about order emissions from typical animal production farms in Ohio. Thank you, Dr. Chao. Good, good afternoon, everyone. As you can now, you understand why I ask this question, because I'm about to present this uh, piece of work, uh, Odor Emission um, from Ohio Farms. This is a collaborative work. Uh, you, know, I mean, you may understand, you know, if you experience odor measurement, it's quite labor intensive, quite expensive. So over years, many of my students and uh, also colleagues, and also a lot of extension educators, state specialist Glenn Arnold, and then the collaborating with Purdue University and you know, over the years work on the different farm odors. Um, as you can hear from Greg, there's no specific regulation. Farm ex you know, activity are exempt from odor regulation. However, every one of us has a sensor of odor, your nose. Uh, so then odor is the most uh, air quality concern um, occur between my farmer and neighbors. When I started my job many years ago, many public hearings about odor complaint. Then I sitting in the, a public hearing, I hear farmer says, oh yeah, we did our best. You know, we didn't smell much. My neighbor said, oh, it's very smelly. It's kind of affect our life. And then as a new um, professor, assistant professor, also an extension specialist, I'm struggling. I think, you know, yeah, odor is kind of just like that. It's a subject to response, our human being, right? So how, you know, they said, the farmer said this, you know, the neighbor said, that, how could we resolve this? I feel the scientific measurement, more objective, you know, um, measurement is a way to go. Um, so that's, I started my work, you know, air quality work started with odors. And I, I, I can, yeah, let's go through that. It's basically this presenting some over years odor measurement result and uh, just give you a sense on how do we uh, approach the odor uh, complaining, resolving the issue between neighbors and the farmers. Odor, I think we all understand, it's generated from all this organic matter degradation in through the inner um, anaerobic conditions, all the microorganisms break down organic matters into tons of, it's not more than, now it's more than 660 kind of volatile organic compounds. Some are good, some are odors, you know, that form odors. And odor is tricky, you talk about the subject response. Some odor people may feel it's, it's good smile. I mean, it's a, another strong industry is our perfume, right? So that's kind of odor too, which is pleasant odor. So what is odor? And uh, we kind of, you know, I'm sorry, we talk about, you know, it's unpleasant. Well, we feel unpleasant smell and then it kind of, it's not that scientific, but yeah. Um, it's it, yeah, the challenge we already discussed. It's a subject response. And then, then when you, you know, strongly, when you have this nuisance and then you may cause your psychological, physiological response and the people feel affect their quality of life. And we don't have too much measurement. It's kind of expensive. And then the, um, it's people's, you know, subject response. So it's kind of difficult to, to quantify this, but uh, you know, as a, like I said, as an engineer scientist, we try to approach that in a scientific ways. Um, so the whole goal of this, you know, presentation is try to show you over years how do we, you know, facilitate understanding of the odor characteristic, and then the, what's odor concentration in different type of farms, and uh, what kind of emission rate, you know, uh, based on our limited study and odor emission is, how the, you know, the odor vary seasonally and spatially on farms, and what kind of factor are affecting odor emissions. This is trying to uh, achieve over the um, presentations. Uh, first example is a study in collaboration with Purdue University. This is part of a large study. We quantify, as you hear from uh, name study, and uh, we quantify all kinds of air emissions, um, dust, you know, ammonia, and then this odor is part of that. Basically, there's a two uh, manure belt. It's not directly funded by a name study, but it's an EPA, um, no, it's a USDA study. So we add on this uh, odor uh, measurement from two manure belt layer houses. Now still the majority houses, even, the, even though the layer industry is going towards cage-free operations, um, but this is a still majority of uh, manure layer uh, houses. We uh, sample, we use a 
you know, Purdue standard method. I use a trailer parking in the two major uh, typical uh, manure belt layer facilities, sample all kinds of parameters 24 seven for the whole years. And obviously we, we were not afford, afforded to measure odor. So there's this mobile trailer air quality lab, Dr. Ji Ching, you know, uh, picture showing calibration, all kinds of gas equipment. And uh, uh, so with that, we have sampling port. We sample the odor uh, monthly, every month we sample odor from inlet because that gas sampling system can e easily, you know, sample, sample gas from any location from inlet, from exhaust. We choose exhaust end, which is represent the worst scenario and still, you know, using this, uh, uh, you know, gas sampling chamber, odor, odor uh, sampling, um, you know, bags to and peddler bag to quickly sample once a month, sample, you know, several location from the exhaust end and the, from the uh, inlet end. Then we ship this odor bag to Purdue University and uh, Dr. Heber's lab. And they, he, they use this uh, olfactometer, basically use a panel of eight students, whoever they recruited to really evaluate, dilute the odors air into different ratio, ask the student to detect. They cannot be, uh, you know, have flu and they cannot be super sensitive. There's quite, you know, protocol to evaluate screening the student panels, um, but uh, they will detect, you know, most of the dilution ratio is gradually decreased until they detect the odor. And then that's the dilution ratio is um, used to calculate this odor concentration, basically odor units per cubic meter. There's more measurement, like the first, like odor characteristic and ask them to describe what kind of smell you feel like. And there's another interesting one called hedonic tone. Is that pleasant or, you know, really offensive? Right? People all like a different kind of perfume, right? Then, the, uh, so that's an interest. There's some more like intensity of just trying to simplify this presentation. Uh, we, this is targeted also for emission rate. Obviously you measure the concentration, it's not enough. We have to quantify the ventilation associated with building. So for the ventilation, we measure the operation status of the fan, use a little vibration sensor uh, developed in my group and also uh, in collaboration with Dr. Ji Ching Ni. And we uh, you have a fan system to really quantify the fan operation performance on the farm, and then to and to, to come out with degradation factors and uh, using man manufacturer curve really quantify how much airflow going on through the farm. So with that, you have your inlet concentration in the inlet concentration, exhaust concentration. You have your ventilation rate, you have burn number. So that's the way we calculate the odor emission per bird uh, emission factors. And the result, uh, so this is the description of the odor from the inlet. As I'll point out, in on-farm, even the inlet has, uh, you know, re-entering re, re uh, re of the exhaust airs. So the even inlet has some kind of um, barn smells, and but in, mostly in the exhaust end, you know, most people feel, you know, it smell of urine, ammonia, uh, farm, rotten meat, feces, haze, that's kind of typical description of uh, poultry farm uh, odor characteristic. Uh, hedonic tones, you know, you're wary, this is inlet, kind of less pleasant, you know, 0.1, neg negative means unpleasant, positive means pleasant. Obviously on the farm overall, we studied two identical building. And so it's about, uh, you know, the scale is 10. So the minus 10 is extremely, offensive, but this is minus four about on the poultry farms and the inlet is minus 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, that's quite interesting. There's not a significant difference between the barns. They are similar. This is a concentration measurement uh, over the months, over years. As you can see, concentration in the warmer months, this is two barns, there's a variation. And then the warmer months concentration are high and then the colder months concentration are high. That's affected by the ventilation, we all know. Then this curve is the ventilation rate. You can see that what's, when the ventilation rate is high and the concentration is low. Um, so there's a little summary of this odor concentration. It's you know two barns, all around 350, 312 you know, odor uh, units per cubic meters. There's not much significant difference between the, the two barns, um, but they do have the seasonal, seasonal difference. This is the emission rate. Uh, calculated for the two bars. 
Uh, so this is a quantification. Obviously, you can see warmer months has a little bit more, um, you know, visually more uh, emission uh, in compared with the colder, colder months. And this is the emission range, 0 0.02 to 0 0.45. And this is a European study. Looks like our older measurement here in this poultry bar is better than European farms. And uh, it's, it's within the range first, right? We didn't off that much, but uh, you know, we're a little bit better. And uh, yeah, that's kind of just the quantitative, you know, the emission factor summary of the emission factors. Um, the environment condition, and uh, you know, we test all this temperature, humidity, you know, all the ventilation. Uh, sound like looks like through the analysis, ventilation rate is a very primary factor affected the odor emissions. That's understandable from the um, you know mechanism point of view, right? So this is a the study about a manure poultry um, manure biot poultry layer facility, and then uh, it's uh, you know. I think a moderate offensive 0.4, and this is concentration. This is the emission range of that. And then the ventilation rate, you know, it's primarily affect all the emission. So that's what I learned from this, you know, more kind of more scientific and large part of large scale studies. Uh, any question at this point for this study? Because uh, from there, I will talk to you some preliminary study we had before. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Ila. Yeah, at the inlet, because this purpose is try to calculate the uh, emission rate. And so we have to measure the concentration at the inlet of the building at the couple location of the exhaust end. Okay, I guess I was, I was curious since it's a manure belt with the manure possibly being dry or wetter depending on yeah. um, whether it's fresh or whether it's old, just if there was variations yeah, yeah, within yeah. the- within That's the a good bar. question. This two barns, they ship manure twice per week. I mean, there are some barns, you know, manure seven days per week. I mean, you know, once per seven days, some like once per day. That will make a difference. Yeah, significant. that's a good question. Yeah. So after that, I'll talk to you some, you know, introduce you some preliminary study we study on the other type of animal uh, farm in Ohio. Uh, so this is just for a survey, initial preliminary survey of what kind of air quality Ohio, typical Ohio farm uh, have then this sponsored by ORDC, uh, Ohio Research um, Development Centers, Research and Development Centers. So we choose the typical freestyle, uh, freestyle dairy farm, and also the two swan farms with the one with a dip pit, one with a pool plug shallow pit. We also have a high rise chicken farm there. Since high rise is facing out, I already produce, you know, introduced a uh, manure belt. So I didn't include the result of, well, some result of the chicken, but mostly focus on introduce you this dairy and the swine farm in Ohio. Um, this is a dairy farm layout. As you can see, you have uh, dairy buildings and then you have the lagoons. You have the milking center and the, so what we did is kind of a survey through the farm and choose this measurement point, upwind and inside the building, many locations, just try to see any spatial variation in the buildings due to ventilation, due to farm, uh, the animal layout, and also near the, you know, we, we know man manure is another major source near the downwind uh, location of the manure lagoon, and also, you know, downwind direction, 500 feet downwind, see how, that odor dispersed on the farms. So this is kind of a survey type of study, try to understand air quality focus, not in the sense of really calculated emissions. Uh, There's a picture showing the dairy farm, uh, free, uh, free stall dairy farm, about 700 cattle. This is uh, the manure storage pond. Uh, actually, we borrowed Dr. Heber's this uh, flex chamber to really, in this sense, we quantify the, some odor emission from this manure storage pond. Um, the schematic of this, uh, we call it a buoyant convective flux chamber, is like you have a filtered air, basically fresh air, pump air going through here, just like a pin, and flushing through the chamber, and this way, flush through the chamber, and then come out, I have all kinds of equipment, this is for hydrogen sulfide, this is for ammonia, this is for odor sample, and we know how much air flow we're you know, sending through this uh, through chamber, so we were able to calculate um, emission too, in, in addition to the concentration. 
This is a swan farm. Um, obviously, it looks like this is a deep pit, right? Only building the manure storage right under, underneath the building. You have upwind inside many, many locations in the barn, also near the exhaust end and downwind directions. We measure all, all kind of air quality parameters, including odors. This is another um, swine facility, but with two stage of uh, manure storage lagoons. Um, so the inside the barns and the downwind direction and measurement. Um, picture of this showing the equipment, the set of sediment in the barns. They're showing this Glenn Arnold. Hopefully you still recognize that he's as young as, yeah, as this. And uh, this is a Michael Brueger, um, a Lala County Extension Educator. We work together, survey the farm with all kinds of our portable tools, this older sampling box, all kinds of portable equipment. Um, yeah, so this is the result. For the dairy farm, you can see uh, inside the building, actually the odor level is pretty you know, low. It's under 100 inside the building, about 100, but that manure storage pond has higher odor levels. And then also in warmer months, because we measure three seasons in the, um, you know, March, June, August. Uh, so it looks like in the warmer months, uh, odor level is pretty high near the manure storage pond. This is the distribution, you know, upwind, inside the building, all good. And then the manure storage pond have higher level in warmer months. And but 500 downwind of the, the farm, this odor level dropped significantly to a low, very low levels. Um, and this is the emission rate over the uh, different months in that manure storage pond. Uh, also, you can see in, in the warmer months, there's more emissions uh, of odors from that manure, dairy manure storage pond. Um, this is a odor measurement from the swine barns, two types of this is a, a shallow lagoon. You can see still that inside the building and also the, at the downwind edge of the lagoon. Well, in, the, in this sense, in the, because there's two stage lagoon, at the downwind edge of lagoon, the, the odor level is pretty low, but inside the building is still pretty high. And in the, with the dip pit, oh, it's just like in the pit, in the building, it's all high, high level. Remember dairy only have a hundred like in the building, but here in the swan, it's a thousand, a thousand sometimes, you know, that's quite different level of the so swine building has higher level of odors. And then the, in terms of this dispersion on farms, similar things, do the exhaust and manure pit, pit, you know, present the highest of the odor uh, levels. And, but downwind 500 feet, it drops significantly uh, on the swine farms. Uh, this is an interesting comparison of the, remember I also study uh, deep pit uh, poultry facilities. So in the dairy, in the building is kind of low, in the warm months, manure storage pond, you have higher odor levels, but in the poultry is in the 200, 300 levels. This is a very uh, agreed with the, even from the manure belt for, uh, facilities. Uh, but in the swine, it's in the was a thousand, you know, almost, you know, a thousand five hundred, six hundred levels in the building, no matter which months, like even in, in winter, it's pretty high. That's kind of interesting comparisons. Yeah, basically through this survey type study, we kind of feel, oh, different farm has different challenges. Um, this swine farm has the highest level odor, odor, and in warmer months, and then dairy, you know, dairy operation, their manure storage pond, it's a strong source of odor, especially in the warmer months. And then the, uh, you know, now you see the poultry and they are in the middle of this. So with this understanding and we kind of, uh, when I go to the public hearing meeting, when the producer you know, and neighbor arguing, you know, then I can be able to see, oh, in the cold months, doesn't matter. In the warmer months, you may apply some straw cover on top of your lagoon to reduce some odor emissions. And uh, for the swine barn, you know, it, it just, you know, you kind of have to <laughs> really work with that. Maybe through the separation distance, Dr. Hebert's group is working on this odor dispersion, siding tools, guide people, especially when you build a new barn, so you kind of have to have a kind of treatment. Uh, so that's about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chao. I think uh, we still have uh, one minute uh, for one or two questions. I have a question. Okay. Um, you showed a lot of uh, measurement of odor and using olfactometer, right? But the, the uh, olfactometer currently the, is the best uh, um, method, I think, to quantify the real order. But uh, olfactometer is also so expensive to uh, 
to measure, right? Each sample cost several hundred dollars. So what's your opinion about alternative methods for odor measurement? That's a really good question. And since odor, even though there's no regulation, but you know, it's the most, uh, you know, most air quality complaint we received among farmers and neighbors. So we really want to have an easy, quick method to measure it. Unfortunately, just like Jitin said, we use a human panel because your our sensor is still the most accurate sensor. When I work at Illinois, we try to the electronic nodes because there's significant contributor. For example, ammonia has odor, hydrogen sulfide has odor. Unfortunately, all this odor do not correlate with the olfactometry measurement odor. Then, as you can see at the first slide, there's 100 more than 160 kind of organic compounds. Some little things, you know, maybe very small concentrations still contribute a lot on the odor. So odor is really complicated. At this point, I feel electronic node is a way, but still, I don't know how long, how many piece of electronic sensor you need to have a combination of assessment of odor. So um, yeah, I think that's why after I study the odor, I go to study ammonia, use ammonia to make a fertilizer because odor is too complicated for me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>